Praise the Lord, Cross Church. How many is ready for church tonight? Hallelujah. If we could all stand, we're going to open up this service with prayer. Let's lift our voices with our faith. Father, we thank you, God, for your word, Lord. We thank you for your church, your sacrifice, your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we ask you to come touch us tonight, God, a heavenly touch to heal and deliver and set free tonight, God. Help us grow in you tonight. And everyone said amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord and worship.
on, lift your hands all over the building tonight. Father, we've come to worship you. We've come to lift you up, God. His spirit on us tonight. God, we love you, Jesus. Sing it one more time. Spirit out. Pour your 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 spirit out. Come on with hands lifted, sing it. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Paul 
pause in our worship to take care of just a couple things. There is people needing prayer. How many believes that when we pray, God hears it and He answers prayer? I feel the faith in the building this evening. God has showed up with His presence to touch. And uh, Sister Jessica, where you're at? Where's Sister Jessica at? She's right here. She's in the media. I'll go ahead and tell you. Her husband had give a prayer cloth and uh, give it to somebody, and they were completely healed. And so people, they've been handing those prayer cloths out. And some of you might not know what that is. It's a doctrine in the Word of God. A lot of churches have gotten away from it, anointing a cloth. And Daddy, they got a hold of uh, Brother Timmy today. I think they were police officers, maybe. I don't know who it was. It was just some people. They've heard of the miracles. They said, listen, can you get some more than prayer calls? We want to pay for them. How much do they cost? She said, it don't cost nothing. It's just free. And so many people don't understand. And so it's a Bible doctrine. So some of our church is like, oh gosh, 80-some percent first-generation Christians and Pentecostals. And so some of you might not know, uh, and we do this pretty regular, but the Bible says in Acts 19, 11, and 12, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. My daddy has more testimonies about how many times uh, people been healed, delivered, set free by praying over a cloth. And when it makes contact, God begins to touch their life. Somebody shout amen. amen. So we're going to get these prayer cloths anointed today and believe that God's going to touch. Brother Justin, if you could run up here. feel the Holy Ghost in here. How many believes God's going to fix the needs? There's already been cancers healed and different things. Before the end of the service, we need to get a bunch of prayer cloths up here and, and hand them out for you. Praise God. Once you stretch your hands this way, we're going to pray in the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. God, we've anointed these cloths with oil. Type and shadow of your presence and your spirit. I pray, God, and we speak faith over him. By the authority of your word and the power that's in your name. I pray, God, when these cloths make contact, that people are healed of disease. Cancers will disappear. God, that you would touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. I want you to sing that song one more time. Come on, we'll lift that hand. Somebody love him in this house. If you believe it, shout, yeah.
Can we clap our hands to the Lord and love Jesus? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, just look at the crowd this evening. Look at the crowd that's on the, in this place on a midweek. Thank you for coming after work and we're out during the day. So glad you're here. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. It's so excited about Brother Mark Thompson preaching tonight on our evening manna. Our hyphen pastor wants you to come. And I want to say to his mom and dad, I'm so glad y'all are here. And we're so proud of your son. And I want you to know that. Thank you for being here. Praise the Lord, church. Pastor, I'm going to move your towel for a second. Hopefully I don't use it. Yeah. You know, this is a major night for me tonight. This is four years of prayer that is answered. Four years every night before I go to bed. I pray that my mom and dad will come to church with me. Hey, Woo. hey, thank you, God. Hey, hey, if that's not a prayer answered for you, I don't know what is. If that's not a testimony, hey, come on, somebody. This could be your family. This could be your family here with you tonight. This is just the start. It's only my mom and dad. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. Pastor, you told me. You told me. You said, Brother Mark, stay consistent. Stay consistent and your family will be here. Guess what? It's happening right in front of all of you. I love it. Yes. This is a wonderful night. I got my mom, my dad, my beautiful wife, my two kids here. Lakin, I love you so much. Even though you try to fight me all the time, but <laughs> all right, I won't I won't take no more time. I'm gonna get right into the word. Matthew 16 and 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Eliza, some say, or excuse me, and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I just want to preach to you for a few minutes. Who am I? You know, sometimes we get in this walk, we start. We stop to forget who God really is. I am the God that told Noah to build an ark. I am the God that flooded the earth. I am the God that gave Abraham a ram to sacrifice. I'm the God that appeared in a burning bush to Moses. I am the God that parted the Red Sea for Moses. I am the God that will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. I'm the God that led... Israel to the promised land. I'm the God that told Joshua to march around Jericho. I am the God that took Gideon in 300 to defeat 120,000. I am the God that gave Samson the strength to slay a thousand men with a jawbone. I am a God that anointed David. I am the God that used David to defeat Goliath. I am the God that you came, or excuse me, this is the God that you came here for tonight. I am the God that stopped the dew and the rain. I am the God that also sent the rain. I am the God that used the ravens to feed Elijah. I am the God that made sure the barrel of meal was not or wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. I am the same God that sent fire from the sky. I am the God that echoed the four leprous foot into a Syrian camp. Let God fight your battles. There... There is battles you're fighting and wasting your energy on you don't have to. God has already gave you the victory. This is the God you serve. He has changed. He hasn't changed. He's still doing exceedingly and abundantly. I think sometimes we forget God can, what God can do for us. We get so distracted with the world we forget to serve God. 
I am, I am the same God that filled the temple with the glory. I am the same God that called Jeremiah. I am the same God that had Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bones in the valley. We need to remember this and start speaking life into the situation. If God can bring a valley of bones alive, how much more can He do for you? We need to remember there's power in the name. What's that name? Jesus. I am the God Daniel prayed to. I am the God that shut the lion's mouth. I am the God that Job prophesied about the Holy Ghost. I am the, the God that prepared the great fish to swallow Jonah. Jesus is the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. Jesus is the God that can turn water into wine. Jesus is the God that can heal the noble son. Some, somebody needs to hear this. Your family members can get healed through your faith. They don't have to be at the feet of Jesus. You can reach them for them. Jesus is the God that drives out evil spirits. Jesus is the God that healed the leper man. Jesus is the God that commanded the sick with palsy to rise up and walk. Jesus is the God that restored the man's hand. Jesus is the God that raised the dead. Jesus is the God that healed the blood issues. You just have to get to Him. Don't let anybody or anything in your way. Jesus is the God that opened blind eyes. Jesus is the God who opened deaf ears. Jesus is the God that calmed the storm. Jesus can come into your life right now and calm the chaos. Jesus is the one that took the seven loaves and fed 4,000 men, not counting the women and children. Jesus healed a severed ear while being arrested. Ida ran. Hey, who is Jesus? He is Christ. He is the Alpha Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is Jehovah Jireh, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords. He is my rock. He is my deliverer. He's the promise of the Father, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. He is grace. He is truth. He is our shield and buckler. He is a line of Judah. He's our exceedingly great reward. He's joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. He is everything you're searching for. Jesus is the God that shed His blood for you. Jesus is the God that went for the cross for your sin. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today forever. Jesus is the God that saved the three Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. This is the God you serve. I'm almost done. I just want to say, you know, four years ago I started this walk. Mom and Dad, I started this. And when I gave my whole heart to Jesus Christ, that's when the change happened. Anybody in here tonight, all you have to do is give your whole heart to God. He knows your heart and your life will change, I promise you. He's not going to leave you in the fire by yourself. He is a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Jesus is love. Jesus is everything that you need. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, why don't we continue that hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you are. Everything that Brother Mark said, you serve a God tonight that can touch your situation. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark Thompson, for that great word. Um, as many of you know, it was his birthday the other day. and um, I sent him a text saying that uh, I'm proud to call him my friend, but I'm even more proud to call him my brother. Um, I think I speak for this entire church when we say that we got your back. Amen. And we got everybody's back that's in this place. If you're tired, if you're hurting, you get to look around and you see a family around you. You're not in this alone. You got every single one of us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. We're just going to get into a few announcements here before offering. Um, well, actually, quite a few announcements, so even if you want to take a couple notes, that would be okay. <laughs> um, prayer room is available in the primary classroom. Um, this will be uh, on Thursday nights and Sunday mornings. Um, the, sh the shoe drive is from September 1st, which we're almost to the end. It's to October 15th. Um, the 15th will be, is that this Sunday? 
next Saturday. Thank you. So please have everything in by uh, either this, the following Thursday or, um, or by that Saturday. So any size, any kind, new or used. Um, Sunday, we will continue having our split sessions. How many loved that this past Sunday? Amen. That was an incredible panel. Um, we are going to be continuing um, this week with Overcome. Overcome of our hiccups and hangups. Amen. That will start at 10 o'clock. We will have our panel. Um, we will do a couple songs and get into our panel, and it will end at about 1045, 1050-ish. Um, we'll have a short intermission. We will continue then at 11 o'clock with our word and worship service. Um, this Sunday, October 9th, everybody say fall picture day. Um, we will be having that in the foyer um, to support our promotions department. So please um, dress nice, um, whether you want to get a family picture, an individual picture, it doesn't matter. Um, it is going to be $10 for one picture or $25 for more than one um, multiple pictures. Uh, praise and worship practice will be Saturday, October 15th. Um, more details on that um, if you uh, need those details. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. How many of us love our pastor? Amen. We do love you, Pastor. Um, this Sunday is October 9th, and we will be honoring our pastor, our first lady, and our first family with a card shower. So please, um, you've got a few days notice to please go out and get a card um, just to show some love and appreciation for everything that they do. I don't believe a month is enough. Um, I believe they need to be thanked all year round, but please let's show our appreciation this Sunday. Um, Brother Justin Suki is going to be having an Into His Marvelous Light Bible study with a cookout at 5.30 here at the church Friday, October 14th. Amen. Once again, that will be Friday, October 14th at 5.30. Um, if anyone would like to donate food or um, donate any uh, maybe uh, utensils or plates or something like that for this event, please get with Brother Justin. Um, call him if you have his phone number. If you don't, I'm sure he'll give it to you. Maybe. I don't know. I'm speaking for him. Um, October 12th at 730 will be cross co Crossroad Recovery, and we will be having a special guest speaker. Drum roll, please. Brother Kerry Armstrong. Amen. We are so excited about that, Brother Kerry. Um, if anybody needs further details of these announcements, I'm sure that we could probably run through them again after service. I know that that was a lot. Now it is time for offering. If we could all stand. Amen. How's, who, how, who's ready to give? Amen. Church, let's pray. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. We receive our families saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids Church, you are dismissed and youth, you are dismissed.
place this evening. Come on, could you lift your voices with your faith a moment and just love him all over this place. Turn your praise to worship and say, God, I just love you for who you are. Thank you, God, for who you are. God, you're so good to us. Praise the Lord. If you could grab your Bibles and turn to 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 15. So good to see everyone this evening, all the kids that are downstairs and the parents said amen. Don't you love having that little bit of break? You love them, just sometimes you don't like them. Come on, be real with me. Look at me. Love them kiddos. I'm up there trying to worship God, and Sadie's doing circles around my legs. She tripped and fell. I mean, I'm trying to keep up with her. So. But uh, God's so good to us. This panel this last weekend was so tremendous. <clears throat> I, in all my years of pastoring, I think it's probably... Brother Bruce, I think it was Sunday that I've never felt so successful as a pastor to have a conversation, a real conversation with people about real subjects um, and then preach, but be able to have that conversation because there's so many preachers that don't want to deal with that. Um, The feedback has been tremendous. Uh, The amount of people that were views uh, on that was amazing. The calls we've gotten. So how many felt like it helped you? Just kind of wave your hand at me. Feel like it helped you. I was amazed at the hands that went up, the people that's dealt with that. This this week, it is hiccups and hang-ups, but how to be an overcomer. And the panel, you do not want to miss it. Brother Justin Stuckey will be on that panel. Brother Mark will be on that panel. Sister Jessica Justice will be on that panel. We assume so much about people you see in leadership. And if you only knew the things that they've survived and went through and served. Somebody say, I'm a survivor. Overcomers, praise the Lord. Second Kings. 6 and 15. Man, I'm glad you're here. It'd be lonely without you tonight. Through COVID, I preached to a camera. That was the most frustrating thing I'd ever done in my life. and uh, But we survived that. So, so glad you're here. Let's read it together. we will read through verse 17. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, <laughs> I love the King James Version. Alas. Say it with me with a real deep voice. Alas. It means wow. Shock. Wow. Wow. My my master, what shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed, the owner generation prayed and said, Lord, I pray that you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Somebody say the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I want to preach on this subject, alas. I'm kidding. I'm going to preach on this subject tonight on shocked. Shocked. It's about that season, isn't it? Somebody look, look at somebody beside him and go, come on, give him the face. Rich, I was pathetic. I'm shocked. I pastored for years. There's just some things that I've been shocked by pastoring, and I'm going to talk a little bit tonight uh, and try to help somebody. Could we lay our Bibles down and just pray? Say, God, help us. Somebody pray in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you so much. Oh, God, we adore you and love you and thank you, Lord, for all that you do among us at Cross Church. God, I thank you for your presence that's in my life personally and your blessing that walks in my world every day. God, thank you for happiness and thank you for blessing me, for the great family. Thank you for your touch that's in my world. In Jesus' name we pray. And you may be seated in the name of the Lord if you're going to help me preach. Praise God. I love midweek service. This is such a great... Uh, great atmosphere. Um, There's been times I've been completely shocked as a pastor. You know, I was raised in a pastor's home, and uh, the dad didn't always tell me everything. You'd have thought everybody walked on water, and even when they took a shower, they wouldn't get wet, because everybody's perfect in the church, you know. (laughs) Nobody has any problems. Ain't no sin in the church. Everybody's perfect. Well, I have grown. To understand that 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 is not the case, I had assumed that because my dad and mom were so positive about the church uh, growing up as a kid. 
I was shocked when I, when I first started uh, pastoring to, to find out that not everybody obeys the Word of God. I assumed that everybody had convictions and everybody would read a simple scripture. Like, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and not try to complicate it. Just say, hey, that's just truth. I'm going to abide by it. I had assumed, y'all still here? Some of you getting nervous. It's going to be good in here tonight. It, I had assumed as a young man that, that when I became pastor that everybody would listen to God-given counsel. I found that one to be false as well. You should have been there the day when, when, when uh, a certain individual walked in and said, I want you to marry uh, my grandbaby to so-and-so. And I said, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> uh, I'm going to have to pray about this. I don't know if that can happen. That, I just don't see that, and, and you see the fire in the eyes. Y'all still here? And, and I said, I just don't see why I would marry them to a drug dealer. I just don't see, I know the ins and outs, and I don't think she can save him. I think you've got to wait till God saves him before you get him married. Y'all still here? And so I kind of made a stand. I found out real quick that not everybody listens to God-given counsel and not everybody wants to hear it. And when they don't like it, guess what they do? They leave. I found out not everybody's going to listen to what the preacher says and not everybody's going to listen to the doctrines that are in the Bible. I can't tell you my first year of pastor and I was shocked at stuff that people would do and want the Word of God. Man, it's quiet in here right now. And would want the preacher to agree with their lifestyle. I can't tell you how many people wanted me to uh, marry them, put a blessing on a marriage. I, I, and, there's, and I don't want to dive into it, but I even had one couple to call who I don't agree with their lifestyle and was demanding I would do it. One man is so confused about which bathroom to go in, trying to get me to justify who he is as a person. I'm not a hater by any means. I don't create hate speech. It's not his. I just don't agree with the lifestyle because the Bible is so clear on it. And so as I've pastored over the years, I find myself getting more shocked at people that are carnal wanting someone spiritual to agree where they are. What happened to people that would just say, tell me what I need to do. Show me the scripture and I'll obey it so you can help my life and let God help my life. I will tell you that things that have shocked me that I've seen is that people that I assumed would be hard to win ended up being the easiest people to fall in love with Jesus Christ and, and love the doctrines of God. I've seen, you know, Christians, they're scared to death of somebody that looks gothic or something, you know. You know, Christians, old, old school Christians, they're scared to death. They, they used to teach you to stay away from people like that. No, you come out from among them. You know, we're not just isolated. We're insulated as well, you know. Stay away from people like that. But then this church, God has helped us. And, and I remember preaching things, Daddy, about they're coming in. They're going to have tattoos all over their faces. They're going to come through the door, and they're going to be God-called Christians. God's going to call them to the ministry. And, and they were shouting for a moment until they walked in. When Lizard Face walked through the door, Y'all still here? He walked through the door and his face was one giant. I mean, he was covered in tattoos and he walked in and sat on the front seat. Somebody brought him in in the danger zone. and I went right down to him. I went out of my way, Daddy, and said, I am so glad you're here. What's your name? Begin to talk to him and tears all of a sudden started filling his eyes and tears. It wasn't long that he was in the altar praying, being baptized. I'm telling you, there's been things in my life that has absolutely shocked me in the ministry. I give you a positive also with a negative. I am so full of faith that I'm gullible. No, it's, it's, it's crazy stupid sometimes. Like, I can believe the craziest story. I call my daddy. I am a believer by nature. Like, you can tell me something. I'm like, that's amazing. That's just. Except you hunters and fishermen. I don't believe nothing you say. But they tell me something. I call my dad. I said, Dad, can you believe? I want to tell you what they told me. He went, Dave. <laughs> I said, but dad, he said this. And it was this. And it was this big. And this. He, he said, David. I said, but really. He said, David. I said, that's kind of far-fetched, ain't it, Papa? He said, yep. 
That's, that's what we call a lie. <laughs> I've learned that people will lie. But I am a believer by nature. Psychology would tell you that you tend to see others the way you see yourself. So that's why some of you look at negativity because you see your flaws in someone else. When in fact, they don't have those flaws. You just see them in somebody else. Be careful your accusations you might be telling on yourself. And I've learned that I am a believer by nature. I'm a believer by nature, Brother Jason. And I found out not everybody is full of faith like me. And not everybody can look at somebody that's in the ditch and not everybody can look at somebody that's confused at where they are and where they're going and what type of lifestyle and and confused at where they are in bad relationships. I can look into the worst world and no matter how addicted they are, a meth bumps all over them, their face is a mess, they're homeless, they stink. You don't. I can look at that person and look into their world, and God can give me a word and say, you're going to be a preacher one day. And this is, I believe in people. There are times I've had to prophesy things and close my eyes. I remember looking at Carrie and said, this is what's going to happen in this length of time. And within a year, it happened. And within three years, you as my youth pastor. Why? Because somebody has got to get some belief inside of their spirit and say I'm willing to be shocked at some things there's some things daddy that I've been shocked by by church people shocked when somebody walks off a street and you're trying to get them all covered up before they can even get out of a bad situation I had somebody come in one day and they said, <laughs> you think we could get a longer skirt on them? I said, I agree. They need to underpin it on their trailer. I get it. But I'm just trying to keep them from dying from Monday to Sunday. I'm shocked at how some people can look at people and say, I just... Why are they here? And I think there's got to be something, and I've seen it in this church. I've watched you love people. And I remember Judy one time. She was so f- I miss Judy, by the way. I miss her candid truth she would tell. And she said, she said, I don't know nobody anymore in this church. I said, well, Sister Judy, the Bible says, if they have a friend, you must show yourself friendly. She said, well, I'll fix that. The next service, she hugged every prisoner in the place. Forty-some prisoners made friends with all of them and helped disciple them. I was amazed and I thought, watch my elders coming out and saying, I'll help, I'm will help. i going to help this revival and I'm going to love people that I don't understand. I watched her hug that one guy and love and make sure he had everybody in clothes and boots. I was shocked at the love I saw coming out of the church. But I also have been shocked at people that would snub their nose at somebody that's not like them. Seen people come in here high and steal seats and everything else, falling out on the floor, and our elders just love on them. Thankful for a church like that. But I've also been shocked at church people and religious organizations and different. Because I, I have, uh, and I know it's a different preaching, but I, we're going somewhere tonight. I, uh, I've been, I've been blessed to be able to preach to many de- age demographics and. Audiences and different religions. I mean, there's people from every walk of life: Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, uh, Baptocostals, Methodocostals, all kinds of stuff. Watch our program from around the world, and I'm thankful for that. But with that comes criticism, and with that comes many things. And so you become everybody's pastor from all walks of life uh, in the street. There's people that love this church. We have prisoners that pay tithes to this church. You believe that? They, they love this church, and they, they literally, when I walked into prison the other day, hey, pastor, thank you for that word on Sunday. There's people from every walk of life that come here. But with that comes different things. I assume everybody gets excited with every revival. I want to help you. I want to help you get excited for people that are being successful in areas of their life that maybe you're not. You rejoice with those that are rejoicing, and God will bless you with the same. If you can frown on it, God won't give it to you. I can't tell you how many times over the years since 2017 we've had the good books. So this ain't all of them, but since 2017, we're at almost 900 souls baptized in Jesus' name. Baptized. Water baptized. So many filled with the Holy Ghost and so many things. But I thought 
Everybody. I mean, this year we're over 150 baptized in Jesus' name. People getting the Holy Ghost just about every service. Lives being changed. And I thought everybody would be excited about that. How's the church doing? Well, well, we, you know, and I'm careful with numbers anymore because people are like, really? Where are you compromising? Really, that number, wow, that's a big number. Sure wish it was happening here. I didn't realize that telling a number, people wouldn't rejoice always. Shock, Daddy, that in a religious community of so many different denominations and so many things, and sometimes even our own ranks, people don't rejoice with you when you have revival. I was shocked. That not everybody rejoices with you when you're rejoicing. I'll tell you how quick. Tell them how you just got money in the bank from your job, somebody. And tell them how, and we'll help you. People in the church ought to be able to tell how God blessed them financially without you getting jealous. Brother Justin, I'll do it for you. You ought to be able to tell them how you started a business from nothing. And started and now you're blessed financially and God's blessing your family. You ought to be able to say it. How many's with me right now? I want you, church, if you'll start rejoicing with people that are being blessed, God's going to bless you with the same thing. Oh, hallelujah. I've been shocked, shocked of how somebody can't rejoice. Oh, we're going somewhere. I've also been shocked when people did not want me to tell them what the Bible said. They didn't want to hear it. You start quoting scripture, people start squirming, man. Bathroom breaks like five a night, you know. Squirming, you know. Wear out the cloth on the chair, you know. White knuckle on the front, white knuckle on the back, you know. They don't want you to tell them. They want you to agree with them. The Bible says that there'll be a spirit in the last day. And don't tell me what to wear. Don't tell me how to live, but I want to be called by your name. There is a spirit in this generation that does not want apostolic truth preached they want you to agree with their spirit. Don't tell them not to go to the bar. They're going to do karaoke anyways, you know. There's got to be something to get in the church to say, if it's in the book, give it to me. I can't tell you how many people, you can raise your hand, has come and said, Pastor, don't hide nothing from me. Don't let me be lost. Don't let me be lost. I can't tell you how many times I've been shocked by people that while I'm preaching, Doctrine. I can't tell you how many Sunday mornings. I remember one time in, uh, in particular I was preaching and everybody was on their phone in the place and I was like, hey, hold on a minute. We doing grocery lists or what we doing? Y'all on the Bible app? Shocked. There's got to be something to get inside of us that says, I am going to obey the Word of God. I'm a believer by nature. But when I read the Bible and it says to do something automatically, Obey what it says to do. Now, I know it's a simplicity in preaching, but I want, you to, I, w- I want to help you. We have guests. I'm sure they probably have a pastor. Well, let me help him for a moment. Those are online. I can't help you if you don't obey the Word. I can't help you if I give you a, my own idea or how I feel or getting some commentary where some guy thinks he knows something about the Bible. we got to get in the book, Brother Mark, and we got to preach this, say it, the Word of the Lord, because we're going to be judged according to our works. I'm shocked. When I see people read something, but they don't want to go over that one. Hebrews 13 and 17, if you could put it on the screen. I'm going to sound a whole lot like a pastor, not an evangelist tonight. Obey them that have the rule over you. And what? Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, and they that must give an account, that they may do it with, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. I can preach The simplicity of the Word of God. And the next day, it's on Facebook, somebody doing it openly. You're going to be judged, not by me. You'll be judged by the Word. Elbow somebody say, you're going to be judged by the Word. It it ain't ain't something. Y'all still here now, right? You're going to be judged by this. I cannot do anything for you once the trumpet sounds. You're on your own then. The Bible says, I will have to stand and give an account for Kamara, Kylie, and give an account for everybody, just Pappas. And Sister Kim, you call me pastor. I'll have to give an account for your soul. Marcus, I'll have to give an account for you. 
I'll have to give an account for Charlie and Justin and Jan and everybody under the sound of my voice. How would you like to have that on your plate? If I fail you, I'll stand accountable to it. If I don't give you the word, I'll stand accountable. Then why didn't you preach it to these people? You knew where they were. I will have to stand in judgment before Jesus Christ himself and give an account. So we got these candy men preachers out there that make sin taste good. You, you, with sin, you won't enter in. I know we want to justify and want everybody to come. I pray every soul in this city comes to this church. And I pray you feel at home when you get here. But when you get here, I'm going to jot just fluff it up and make you get a little goose pimples on your arm and flash a few lights and put the smog machine on and make you feel cute. No, we're going to preach you the word of God because I want you saved. After you've got, got numb from what you did that week, somebody's got to tell you to come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Somebody's got to preach to you the truth. I take this seriously. I, don't, I wouldn't do this. There's not an amount of money you could give me to do what I do. There's too much accountability. I love you enough to look at you in a lot of things and Bible doctrines. I'll teach with you one-on-one. We have so many guests, but I'll tell you what the book said. I love you enough not to hide one truth of this word of God. How many wants to be right with God? Come on, how many just want to be right with God? You know, so many people, so many people are scared of hell. That's what they're scared of. They want to go to heaven, they're scared of hell. And so they do things because they don't want to go to hell. I have people to ask me, if I do this while I go to hell, I'm like. I've got this bottom jaw drop thing. It's like, they won't ask you nothing else once you do that. Try it one time. If I do this while I go to hell, when has it ever been about heaven or hell? You mean to tell me you do things to keep from going to hell? I do things so I can please Jesus. I have a God conscience. Everything, I come to church because I love it. It's not what you don't get to do. It's about what we get to do. I get to serve God. I get to live holiness. I get to not do all this stuff. We're not in bondage. We've been liberated by the power of Jesus' name. We've been liberated from the mess and the muck of this world. I've been liberated. I don't have to listen to the cultures of the world. When has the cultures of the world ever told the church what to do? Cultures change. Cultures come. Cultures go. Butterfly collars are just around the corner. Oh, no. Bell bottoms are just right around the corner. Polyester suit, neon green, lime green, just around the corner. These things keep coming in circle. There's one thing that never changes. We've got world cultures all over the place. Chinese people think we all look alike, and we think they all look alike in China. Cultures, right? If we're not careful, there is a Bible culture. And it doesn't matter what any culture says around the world. The culture of the Word of God never changes. You want to know something about what not to do, what you shouldn't be doing to please God? Get in the book. Where's your Bible at? Come on now. Where's your Bible? Well, my preacher said, no, you better get your book out. He might be leaving something out that you might have to stand accountable for. One. Get your book out. Come on, get your book out. Now, y'all ain't with me preaching right now. Get your book out. I want to know what the Bible has to say. This is why. Put Revelations 20 and 11 up. I'm not going to finish this tonight. Shock. And I saw a great white throne. Read it with me. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Next verse. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the The what? The books were opened. Books were opened. 
and were open, and another was open, which is the book of, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the, let me help you out. There's a book, and the book, look, look at this, the book of life, to see if your name was in it. If it wasn't in it, it ain't going to work out for you. He opens up the book of life at judgment day to see if your name's in it. And I'm thankful my name's already written down in glory. <laughs> oh, I feel like shouting. You know if it's in there or not. I say that you know if it's in there or not. You know if been twice born of the water. You ought to dance for a moment and say, I know my name is in the book. Daddy, my name's in the book. And he looks to see if your name's in the book of life. And the Bible says that you're judged. I'm working the camera people tonight. Judged out of those things which are written in the. There's a book of life and then there's your Bible. 66 books of your Bible. He's going to open up the book to see if your name's in it. Which tells you if you get to stay or not. And then the 66 books, he's going to judge you out of the law and what he wants out of you in that book. matter how, how, how what you think what you think don't matter at this point it don't matter what daddy said or somebody it ain't about that it's about what the book says because we got I deal with a lot of people in recovery and we always blame somebody I mean I know not you we're always blaming somebody but the buck stops with you because when you get to judgment you can't say well they were say-. I mean they were and he's going to be looking at you to say, I don't see your name here. Why didn't you do this? You had a Bible. You heard it preached. Why didn't you obey it? Anybody hear what I'm preaching in here tonight? And the Bible says that once you see and you're in the judgment day, that the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to the... How like to be standing in line you look and there's Hitler in front of you? Saddam Hussein. Huh? Standing there. Because the Bible says, every knee shall bow. Oh, you wait till I get to heaven and I'll give God a... You ain't going to say nothing. Everybody's going to go to heaven. Not everybody's going to get to stay. The shocking day is to think those that are going to be there are not going to be there. And people you thought would never make it are going to be standing and walking through the pearly gates. <laughs> it's a sobering. Every decision you make, is it going to keep me from heaven or hell? But the whole point is, why am I doing what I'm doing? Can I tell you, my mama sings a song, and we've got to get you to sing it. It's a good life living for the Lord. It's so wonderful knowing my reward. And today His precious love I can endure. It's a good life living for the Lord. They have taught me to please God. I make decisions every day not because of an eternity. I make decisions every day because I'm God conscious. I want to try to wrap this up here in the next few minutes, but I want to tell you I'm shocked when people are not God conscious. I don't do this for Joan. She doesn't do this for me. I remember she told me one time, she said, Honey, there came a time when I had to ask myself, was I doing this for you? Dad, I remember the time and all the years you taught me everything. And Mama, the conversation we had, I remember a time coming to say, why do I believe what I believe? And I thought, you didn't know I did this. I thought, I got to block out all this for a little bit. And I got in a book and I fasted and prayed. And I sought the face of God. And I got into holiness and separation and doctrine. And I started studying it with everything that's in me because I feared for my salvation. You know, and I got to look and the Bible says, be sure of where you've learned it from. Paul said, be sure. Know what you know. And you better. Just because somebody taught you doesn't mean everything's right. I'm going to, I got to know. 
And I got in a book, Daddy, after fasting and praying, and I found out that my daddy had been preaching me truth. I was working the coal mines in my Bible. It's covered in coal, dirt, and grease. You ought to see that old Bible. That Bible you give me, and it's covered still this day in oil stain. And I found out that twice born of the water and the spirit is bright. I've been picked on and ridiculed and made fun of preaching on TV, but does it look like I care? I don't care. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 10 and 17, if you can put it on the screen. Anybody enjoying this tonight? I want to be real with you. I, I, I just want to be real with you. I want you to get to a place where you're just not following in a personality. I know I'm amazing. If you're not careful, you'll follow a personality, a zeal, a culture, a fad. I've seen fads come and go for years in the church. Oh, oh, oh you, you wait. You got all the dark platforms and then it'll be back to white again. The big screens will be gone. The drums will be in the center again. I've seen it come and go. Just wait. It's coming around like the butterfly collars. You watch. If, if we're not careful... We'll get caught up in it. Why am I here in this church? I question you. Are you here for you? Are you here for your family? Are you here for God? Are you here for a personality? Can I tell you, if the preacher was monotone, as long as he's preaching the truth, I want it. Give me, somebody shout, give me truth. Romans 10 17 says, read it with me. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Faith. Somebody say, faith come. The only way you're going to get faith from anything. Thank God for music. Thank God for everything we're seeing coming down the pikes. It's been written all over all the different religious demographics. I'm thankful for this generation and some of the stuff they're writing. It's powerful. But let me tell you where you're going to get your faith at. Faith is during preaching. You want faith to impart to your spirit. You feel that? You need to create a landing pad. You need to get you a little notebook and a paper, iPad, and your Bible and come to church and say... Preach to me, preacher. Preach to me something that will change my life. Preach to me something that will challenge my spirit. Preach to me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with just a couple things. I'm going to try to shut this down. I was shocked when, when and I want to help you. Some of you are battling financially. And I, I don't like dealing with money, but I'm going to deal with it. Because I feel too. I assumed when I came in as pastor... 100% of everybody just paid tithes and given an offering. They had just faithful. Because I knew, I mean, I knew center people that don't go to church do that. And so I've been taught that my whole life. And so, especially in the economy that was going on there, it's hard to mention money. Inflation and gas prices, it's hard to mention money. But they give you a biblical principle that will change your life. I will change your life with this. Malachi 3.6. For I am... The Lord, Malachi 3, 6. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, how can we even return to you, God? And he says, will a man rob God? Ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have ye robbed thee? And he in tithing and offering. He said, Listen, look, look at this next part. It scares me. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even the whole nation. Next verse. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me. God said, prove me. Oh, I can hear some of the echoes. He's talking about money. Now, I want you to have money. I want you to be blessed. And you got to hear this. You get 10 apples, you better give God one of them. You got 10 pears, you better give him one of them. Whatever you take in and increase, you better. You better. And I'm going to tell you what, because look what it says. Saith the Lord of hosts in verse 10. If I, read it with me. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be ruin, room enough, you don't have enough room in your house. You don't have enough room in that wallet. You don't have enough room in your bank account. I know people got so blessed that the insurance couldn't cover all their money, so they had to get three different banks. Y'all don't believe this type of stuff. You'd be shouting right now if you believe what I was saying. Anybody believe what I'm preaching? 
How many wants to be blessed financially? You're going to be shocked when it starts happening. You're going to be shocked when God starts blessing your life. Give somebody a high five and say, I believe this. Some of you didn't even high five. Good heavens. Say, I want to be blessed. Now, I'm going to help you with something about money that you didn't know. And listen, you can ask anybody around. If you're a guest, ask somebody. Say, he don't talk about money. I mean, I, I hate talking about this. But some of you are shocked I am. I want you to put the next verse up. Malachi 3 and 11. This is what he said, when you give or you're tithing and you're offering. He said, read it with me. I will rebuke the devourer. Who? For your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. And that says the Lord of hosts, and all the nations shall call you blessed. It is the only place. Caleb, I'll see you back here. You're on the edge of your seat. I'm loving it. I remember when you was in prison preaching with me like this. On the edge of his seat. I'm thankful for this because he's working the job. God's going to bless you. you. You need to hear me. I remember you didn't have nothing in them denims. It is the only place in the Bible. I see Brother Preston over there. We're going to preach right now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Daddy, they're going to be shocked when they'll obey this. How many feels what I'm preaching right now? It is the only place in the Bible. Put it back up there. Rebuke the devourer on your behalf. Put it back there. And I will rebuke. God said, I will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. There is no other place from Genesis to Revelation where God says, watch this. I'm going to do something I don't do in any other place. When you give of your finances, I'm going to rebuke the devourer that's been trying to destroy your family, destroy your goods, destroy your job. I'm going to destroy... When God steps up and said, watch me rebuke what's been trying to destroy you. Somebody say, I'm going to be shocked when I see what God does. Oh, I've got to bring this to a close. Let's all stand around this building. Shock. Shock. Shocked. Shocked. I'm shocked. Take the simplicity. Did you know that your New Testament is a third grade level? The these and thou's get y'all messed up, but it's. Third grade level stuff. When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he was scared of being picked on by the people he looked up to and the surrounding, the Pharisees and said, he came to Jesus by night and he said, started asking him questions. Jesus said something. He said, you've you got to be born again. He said, you mean to tell me i got to be born of my mama? That's David's version. <laughs> to go to heaven. Jesus was talking to a 40-some-year-old man telling him he got to be born again. He's like, we got to go through all that? That's not what he was saying. He wasn't looking at a 40-some-year-old man. you got to be born of your mom to go to heaven. He said, you got to be born of water and of spirit. The subject was born again, not mother or birth. It was a born again was the subject. How can I be born again? you got to be born of water and of spirit. Luke 24 says in the commission, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance is dying out. The only place you can ever find remission of sins is in baptism. Study it. Challenge me. It's the only place in the Bible. Simon Peter stands up and preaches the message that Jesus said to proclaim. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, he said, repent and be baptized. Put it on the wall. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for I don't need it, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you, point at somebody with that judgment over you and your children, and all that are far off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And I am shocked in this last day, and people said, well, that was for them. People still debating if speaking in tongues is for the church. Still debating this. What are we, what are we still debating? Church is debating if you can be healed. The sign of the believer is to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues.
If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. An insurance policy. Guys, let's quit building again the foundations of repentance and let's move on to perfection. As, as the writer said in the epistle, let's move on to perfection, not laying again the foundation. Let's move on to some things and quit being shocked and quit letting people question everything. Quit questioning and start living it. Look at somebody say, quit questioning it. Start living it. I gotta shut this down. Shop. I could keep you another two hours, but I'm done. I've been preaching by 40 minutes. Shocked. I believe the generation that's coming up, and we've seen some. Look at the crowd in here tonight. Sunday morning we'll be wall to wall. We're gonna build a building, but I believe by the time we see what God does in this next, nothing's gonna shock us anymore. Ready for your family to come, Mark? I remember. <laughs> Ministry, I want you to come. I want you to get some prayer cloths and anoint them with oil, and I want you to just put them across the platform because we're going to hand them out. Mr. Thompson, I remember when I told him that word, and he said, You don't know my mom and dad. So he said, He didn't believe it. Ah, you hear that? He said, Sound like him. So you know what I had to do? I had to speak it for him. And the older generation had to look at the next generation and say, you can't see what I see in the Spirit. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Bible says when the younger generation opened their eyes, the Bible says he saw that they were surrounded by angels. And there was more with them than there were with the enemy because there's got to be something happened to us together that we all start seeing the same thing. My God, I feel all good. Can we lift our hands right now and say, God, I commit my life to you. And whatever's in your word, I'm going to live it. It's not about if I'm convicted. It's about that you said so. I'm not going to go over how I feel because it doesn't matter how I feel. You're the judge. Come on, pray this. God, it's about what your word says that will judge me in that day and I'm going to live it. I'm going to follow it. I will not defile my temple. I will not do things that are not pleasing to you. And God, this is not about heaven or hell. This is about pleasing you. Let me be more God conscious, God, to not offend you. I don't want to offend you. Could we really be real with God and thank God for his word right now all over this building? Come on, as it's about him, nothing else matters. If it's about him, nothing else matters. <laughs> Come on, lift your voices with your faith all over this building. It's not about how I feel. It's about how he feels. It's not about what I think. It's about what he thinks. God, save us. Change us. Touch us. Mm hmm They feel this presence of God. <laughs> well, we could walk to the front and stand just so we can have plenty of room for people praying. Could we do that? Could you come and stand as a family? There's plenty. We can have plenty of room when we stand. If we have to, we'll move chairs and just keep coming. We're going to lay prayer cloths down. They've prayed over them. And I want you to get one before you leave and take one home with you. And keep it in your home. Keep it in your Bible. Keep it in your car. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost all over this building. They're getting ready to sing. Come on, that's it. Keep coming. Keep coming. Find your place to pray and say, God, I commit my life to you today. I'm going to serve you the rest of my days. <laughs> Come on, that's it. Open your heart to God. Was 
tonight so just hang around and worship for a little bit and rejoice with us when we baptize amen if the, their family would like to come so you can be a part and be right here we'd love to have you over here Oh, God. 
show you, now we're going to show everybody Sunday, but this is Everly. And this is, I want you to look at that baby. She is our baby in Riverhouse, recovery. And there's Callie right there, mommy. She had a good delivery, but I want you to look what God's done. This baby is doing good, so we rejoice with you, Kylie. Everything's going to be okay. Praise God. Brother Justin. It's our baby around here, isn't it? Praise God. All right. How many's ready to baptize? I'm so excited.
center of